Hello everybody. So I've got this uh, odd shaped piece of a Arizona purple moss agate. It's kind of a wedge shaped here. It was miscut when I was cutting a, uh, when the original cut was by hand and I got this in the vise and slabbed it, made some cabs earlier. So I got this piece left. I wasn't going to do anything with it because it's misshaped. It's really thick and then uh, really thin down here. But I have drawn a design. Originally I drew this triangle. Check the uh, thickness down here. It's still pretty thick right at that point. So I made the triangle a little bit bigger, rounded the top off a little more. So I'm going to trim this design out right here, even though it's going to be really thick here. And I'm going to cap this and we'll see how it comes out. I'm not sure if this will be the uh, front or the back. I like this, but by the time they cab this, like that bug, for example, because of the thickness, he's going to go away. See some more quartz over here on this side. So I don't know how it'll affect that edge. Again, maybe I'll shape him first and then decide which is front or back. And then uh, let me get him cut out first and uh, shape it to this on a grinding wheel. And we'll see which side wants to be front and which side wants to be back. Now, when I go to finish the stone, obviously we'll grind this end down a lot further. And I still think this has got enough thickness right here to be decent. But I didn't want to let this piece of purple moss go to waste. So let's get him trimmed out ground down to shape and decide which is front and which is back. All right, I'm going to get this on the saw and uh, I'll be back after I grind it down to shape. We'll see. All right, I've got it trimmed out to that basic shape. You can see the uh, thickness difference. Some of the anomalies on the edge. Like that little druzy pocket. I'm not sure how deep that goes, but it's going to be in the stone. Got this uh, horizontal fracture line. Don't know where it runs to, how deep it is. Rather, it didn't show up, but it is near the bottom. But if I make this the top, as you can tell, It could come close to coming into play, but that might be underneath the bezel or the uh, bevel on the edge for the bezel. Hmm. I like that pattern better though, that's for sure. If I make this the top, it's a good chance I'll miss some of this, I think that's going to be in the stone no matter what. It's going to have a little bit of a divot in the edge unless I reshape it. Whew. If I do make this the top, I'll for sure get rid of this. Unless, of course, it goes deep into the stone, which it could. Can't tell what it's doing. I don't see it coming out here. So it either ends or bevels down. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to make a decision and live with it. 
of it. All right, I'm just gonna make this the top. We'll go from there. I'll get this on a stick and get it out, get it ground down and see how it turns out on the first wheel. Actually gonna probably put a really coarse wheel on there to help grind some of this down. I think I have an 80 and an 80 hex, so we'll see what the 80 hex does. If it starts chipping, I'll go back to the 80. And then eventually I'll put the 180 back on and clean it up and I'll be back. We'll see what it looks like. All right, everybody, I am back. So I have gotten this ground down to the actual shape. Um, I put an 80 hex wheel on the uh, unit and ground it down to this and then uh, replaced the 80 with a 180. Typically I would do a 100, but 180 is all I had. And I uh, tried cleaning it up a little bit. I can't tell if these scratches are left over from the 80 or from the 180. So at this point, I'm going to get it back on to the next grinding wheel, which is a 220. And see if I can get the rest of these scratches out. If not, I'll go back to the 180 and then back to the 220. But the idea is to get the scratches from the previous wheel out, which is what I'm going to attempt to do. And then we'll move on to the next, or the first resin polishing wheel, which in my case is a 140. Um, I typically go back to a 140 to make sure I get all the scratches out and get it smooth. There's no flat spots. And then I'll move on to a uh, 320 from there. So let me go get this ready for the resin wheels. So I'll go uh, up to a 220. If that works, great. If not, I'll go back to the 180 and hit 220 again until I get all these scratches out. All right, I'll be right back. All right. Back from the 220, I did not go back to the 180 in between. I just wanted to take a look and see if it looks any better. And I believe most of those scratches are gone. And these are the 220 scratches that are remaining at this point. <clears throat> I think it's ready for the 340 and uh, if there are any scratches visible like this after the 340 then I'm probably going to have to go back to the 180 and 220 again because obviously if I can't get them out with that it's not going to get any better but this is looking pretty good all right let me go hit it on the 140 and see if we can't get a good shape on this. Be right back. Right, back from the uh, first soft wheel, the 140. And I believe we have all of the scratches out of this. It is looking pretty good. All right, so the next wheel is a 320. So let's get it on the 320 and See what it looks like after that. I am back from the 320 and it is looking pretty promising. Look at that, you can almost see the shop lights. That's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to get it on the first actual polishing wheel. And it's going to be a 600 grit. 600 grit. Afterwards, we should be able to make out the uh, shop lights in the reflection. So, let's go get it on the 600 and get the uh, polish started here. Alright, I'll be right back. I am back from the 600 grit wheel and there you go, we got shop lights. Alright, 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's getting a good polish started. All right, let me go get it back on the next wheel. Next wheel would be a 1200. And then uh, from there we'll do cerium. So let me do the 1200 first. We'll take a look at it before we do the cerium. And when I say cerium, I mean cerium oxide. So let me go get it on the 1200 and I'll be right back. All right, back from the 1200. And there you go. That is a really good polish. See the lights really well. Everything's looking good, no scratches. Next up, we're gonna hit this with the cerium oxide and a leather polishing pad and we'll see what that does. So let me go get that done and I'll be right back. All right, back with the final polish with the cerium oxide. And I got the edges beveled. And got the chips off the back and kind of did a not a polish, but a flat sanding on the back. I don't know, it came out pretty good for a scrap piece. Glad it didn't get thrown out. That is a nice cabochon. Alright, thank you for watching, and if anybody's interested, I will put a listing up on Etsy for this stone. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a nice day.